Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and this is Varun Tahin. So we have been looking into statistics part lately and covered the essential parts to cover its aspects and usage in data science. Now there is another component which has an equal weightage in data science domain and that is mathematics. As you guys know, for an algorithm to be developed, there are underlying formulas that run in the background. And for this specific reason, a need to learn the mathematics concepts are equally important to understand the algorithm itself. Therefore, I have planned to start a new series where we would step into preliminary concepts of algebra and calculus, which will help people who are not from mathematics background and give them a boost on these topics. So we would cover the individual algorithms and their concepts once we start with the machine learning module. But this module primarily is made to give people direction as to which topics are necessary instead of getting lost in mathematics ocean itself. So this series will encompass filtered concepts from mathematics especially for data science and thus you guys can rely on the topics taught. So to start with, in today's session we will be covering linear algebraic concepts such as vectors, scalars, vector operations and vector spaces. So let's start our session by defining what are vectors and scalars and are there any differences between the two. So a quantity that has magnitude but no particular direction is described as a scalar quantity. Whereas a quantity that has magnitude and acts in a particular direction is described as a vector quantity. Got it guys? So we can understand these by help of an example. So the example of scalars are distance which are calculated in meters and as you believe that distances are particularly measured in magnitude that is in meters as its unit of scale therefore it has no direction. Also speed is in meters per second so this is also a scalar quantity furthermore time is calculated in seconds hours and minutes and power in watts so these all quantities are particularly the quantities which do not have any direction associated to it and therefore referred to as scalar quantities whereas concepts like displacement will have a scalar unit to it that is 11 meters that comprises of the distance and the direction that is east so 11 meter to the east is defined as the displacement which is a vector quantity. Furthermore, velocity is also a vector quantity which is measured in meters per second at let's say 30 degree horizontal direction. Moreover, acceleration and force also you can notice will have an element of direction in it. The third difference between the two is the vector changes when change happen in either magnitude, direction or both. Whereas scalar quantities changes when only the magnitude changes in it. Now let's see how do we represent a 2D vector in a plane. So guys 2D vectors are always represented in a plane or a flat surface like the one you are seeing on the screen. So let's say that we want to represent a two dimensional vector which is minus 2 comma 3. So to demonstrate this we have to always think of vectors as lines or arrowed lines originating from the origin that is 0 comma 0 which is this point. Now what we have to do is we have to go to a displacement which is an arrow towards x axis representing minus 2 because the first coordinate is minus 2 which is representation of the x axis. The second value which is 3 is a representation of the y axis. So what we will do is we will start from 0 comma 0 and we will go towards the left that is minus 2. Okay. So this is the point and from the origin again we have to go to the y axis keeping in mind the unit 3 okay which is this point. Now we will draw perpendicular lines to the x as well as y axis starting from these points which is 3 and minus 2 and the point which we have got. So this represents the final position of the vector. So indirectly we have to go from the origin that is 0 comma 0 to this point and then this becomes the final representation of our two dimensional vector which is minus 2 comma 3. So guys now that we have seen how do we form 2D vectors using the coordinate plane we will now check out how do we represent vectors in a 3D plane okay. So let's imagine that we have been given a three dimensional vector with 2 comma 3 comma 4 representing the values on the x y and z plane. So guys as you know that 3D is three dimensional therefore the planes 
that it will have will be 3. So to simplify things out, we can regard a paper as being in a 2D plane, but a cube or a cuboid to be in a 3D plane because that's a real time three dimensional object which has length, width and height as well. Whereas in a 2D plane, we only have length and width. So that is the reason you are seeing this extra plane which is represented by Z here. So this will represent the height of that object as you are seeing on this figure. So the figure you are seeing on this cube. So the figure you are seeing on this screen is a cube and it will have the X axis as the length, the Y axis as the width or breadth and Z axis as the height. Now we have to create the vector same way as we have created in the two dimensional plane. It's just that we have the extra plane here, which is the Z axis. So what we will do is we will go two units on the X axis. That is this point, three units to the Y axis, which is this point, create a parallel plane, the line which is parallel to the X and the Y axis intersecting these points. And then for the Z, go for four units and stretch this plane over and just create a vector starting from 0 comma 0 to this point. So this will represent a three dimensional vector on this 3D plane. Now guys, we have seen what do scalars and vector mean and how do we represent them? Now, as you know that these are quantities, these can have the same rules as the arithmetic operations like addition or subtraction. Now, when we talk about adding two vectors, let us take an example and let's see how do we do that. So let's assume that we have one vector represented by V and another vector which is represented by W and let's check how do we add them visually. Okay. So first what we have is a vector V which is the first step. The second step is basically can be a vector W anywhere in the coordinate plane. So what we have to do is we have to draw a parallel line to this copying this vector W and starting this vector from the end of vector V and stretching it to the same units that this vector has. Okay. So let's say that this is having two meters as length. This should also be two meters. And this vector should be parallel to this while copying. Now at the end, what we need to do is draw a vector originating from the base of vector V to the tip of vector W. So this final vector will represent the addition of these two vectors, which is V and W. Now before jumping on to the real operations on vectors, including addition, subtraction and multiplication, we will see some concepts related to it that defines the underlying governing rules. So as you know that vector is a representation of magnitude plus direction where magnitude is nothing but the scalar quantity which can be represented as speed and let's regard east as the direction. So combining the speed and the east as the direction, we can get velocity which is a vector quantity. Now we can even change these vectors by doing several operations on it. And one of the operations we can perform on vector is multiplication. So we can change the vector by multiplication and that process is called as scaling. Now, as we have seen before, we can add two vectors by linearly combining them. So here it is representing some scalar quantity along with the vector or indirectly we are scaling this vector by certain magnitude. Then what we are doing is we are adding another similar kind of vector by scaling it. And then we are adding these two vectors. So indirectly what we are doing is we are scaling the vectors and we are adding them. And we can define the span of vector V and W as the set of all their combinations where A and B can vary over the real numbers. Now we represent the real coordinate space with the help of this R with a special dash or simply R. So when we say a two dimensional real coordinate space, it can be represented by R square where all possible real value two tuples can exist or in short, every possible two dimensional vector can exist. And similarly, we represent the three coordinate space by R cube. So when we have something like this, which is a representation of a three dimensional vector, we can say that X belongs to R cube. That is simply saying that this vector exists in this real coordinate space. So guys, now that we have looked at some of the concepts, let's look at the 
operations which vector supports okay so let's say that we have two dimensional vectors a and b which belongs to the two dimensional real coordinate space and we have to add them okay so this is simple guys we have to do it element wise that is 6 minus 4 that is 2 and minus 2 plus 4 which is again 2 so it will be a vector with 2 comma 2 now what would be the resultant vector if we have to multiply a scalar quantity with the vector so let's look at that scenario as well so let's say that a is 2 comma 1 and we are multiplying 3 to it which is a scalar quantity so this is again simple because we will be multiplying both 2 and 1 by 3 okay so 3 into 2 6 and 3 into 1 is 3 so it will have a vector with 6 comma 3 as the resultant output and guys please remember that the direction of this vector will be same as the direction of the previous vector because we are multiplying it with a positive quantity so this is indirectly scaling up with the magnitude we are specifying here and not changing the direction whereas if we multiply the same vector that is 2 comma 1 by minus 1 which is a negative quantity we will get minus 2 comma minus 1 which will indirectly flip its direction now the second example can be represented by this graph which you are seeing on the top right corner of the screen wherein the initial vector 2 comma 1 is represented by this line and when we multiply it by a scalar quantity of minus 1 this will be changed and represented by this vector which has changed its direction now let's look at third example wherein the starting point is minus 4 comma 4 and we are adding another vector which is minus 1 comma 2 so it's an arithmetic operation where this vector a is added to the original starting point and therefore we do element wise addition which is minus 1 which is minus 4 minus 1 comma 4 plus 2 so this becomes minus 5 comma 6 as the final vector now let us touch base upon some of the concepts that we will use later for vector operations and its transformations so one of such concepts is unit vectors so as you know that a vector is a quantity that has both magnitude as well as direction a vector that has a magnitude of 1 is called as a unit vector it is also called as direction vector because these unit vectors are commonly used to indicate the direction with the scalar coefficient providing the magnitude so a unit vector is represented by the symbol which is this and also known as cap or hat symbol and the unit vectors are usually determined to form the base of a vector space which we have spoken earlier and every vector in the space can be expressed as a linear combination of these unit vectors okay so this is a brief about unit vectors we will be covering more in the later segments so guys when we talk about the representation of unit vectors you can simply assume in a 3d space you can simply assume this via this example when we talk about 2d or a 3d space right we have two directions when going to two dimensional plane but we have three direction while going to the 3d plane right so in a 2d plane we would have i cap in the x axis j cap in the y axis but we would have an additional k cap in the z axis which you can see on this diagram and this is for the 3d plane so these unit vectors are just one unit distance away from the origin now let's understand this with the help of vector operations and how it is useful so let's assume that we have a vector 2 comma 3 and a vector minus 1 comma 4 with us and the unit vectors in this is 1 comma 0 which is 1 in the x axis and 0 in the y axis which is represented by i cap and j hat which is 0 comma 1 or in simpler words 0 in the x axis and 1 unit in the y axis which is this now we can represent v and b in terms of the unit vectors also so when we talk about 2 comma 3 we can also say it like this 2 i cap plus 3 j cap and when talking about b it can be represented by minus 1 i cap plus 4 j cap so indirectly what we are doing is we are adding coefficient to the unit vectors so the coefficient becomes the vectors itself and we are multiplying it by the unit vectors and then adding the values so guys remember that i spoke about the magnitude that a vector that has a magnitude of 1 is a unit vector with that in mind you might be asking me question what is the magnitude of a vector so a magnitude 
for a vector like this with different coefficients starting from a1 a2 a3 to a n will be having the magnitude which will be the square root of some of the squares of these coefficients so for an example if a is 1 comma 2 comma 3 then we can represent it in terms of unit vectors as i cap plus 2 j cap plus 3 k cap and the magnitude will become the square root of some of the squares of these coefficient which is 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square and will result into square root of 14. Now we can also add these vectors in an efficient way okay so when we want to do vector v plus vector b we can simply take its coefficient add them and derive the result okay so this will become 2 plus minus 1 i cap plus 3 plus 4 j cap so the resultant vector is i cap plus 7 j cap which is the vector notation of it or simply saying 1 comma 7 as a column vector so that's all guys from my end we will be covering the remaining topics from the agenda in the second session let me know how did you find this content and if it was clear enough to understand the concepts taught as this is the new series i wanted to cover the topics from basics so some of you might find it really simple but this course is made keeping in mind every set of audience including the ones who are unfamiliar with mathematics concepts especially linear algebra and calculus. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel and share it with your friends who are planning to step into this field or wanted to make career in data science. I'm glad that I am able to serve you guys to the best of my knowledge. Hope to see you soon in my next session. Until then thanks and take care.